Okay, and we're back to tackle question two of this series. Where does the sun go if the earth is flat? This should be fun. Okay, let's get to it. Where does the sun go if the earth is flat? Well, the sun neither rises nor sets, but travels in a clockwise circuit from east to west and only appears to rise and set due to perspective. The sun disappears at the vanishing point of human perspective on the horizon where the ground meets the sky. Wow. Okay, first, that's not how perspective works. If the sun disappearing was due to perspective, it would first be getting smaller, approximating a single point on the horizon as it approaches the vanishing point, and not stay relatively big as it reaches the horizon. Plus second, it would not dip under the horizon as it does, but instead just disappear as a small point at the vanishing point. Plus third, after it was gone, you would be able to still see it for a while through binoculars or a telescope, which you can't, because it's under the horizon and not just off in the distance. Seriously flat tiles. This is as simple as math gets. And since the sun is not, 93 million miles away, I repeat, not 93 million miles away, but much closer and smaller, the light emanating from the sun only illuminates about half of the flat plane at once as it makes its daily journey. Hmm. Okay, so the sun is a spotlight on a flat earth, as it was with the perspective. If that were the case, you would still be able to see the sun at any time from anywhere on the earth. It might only illuminate half the planet at once, but the direct illumination is not the only thing that can be seen when you shine a light on something. You can still see the light source from the side, and even if you're a proponent of the flashlight sun, you know the one with a crust of some kind, shielding it from sending light out to the sides, you would still be able to see the light cone from the side. So that doesn't work either. Plus, if that were the case, we would be able to see said crust. So, how come no flat arts had come forward with pictures of said crust? I'll wait right here while you produce such a picture. Didn't think so. Also, with your model, you're going to have a huge problem trying to explain the 24 hour sunlight for 6 months on the South Pole when it is summer on the Southern Hemisphere. And how come the South Pole is not only illuminated, but suddenly you can see the sun all day round from all across the other side of the flat earth when you couldn't earlier. You know, because perspective. And why is the sun hidden for everybody else in between where it's night time? How does perspective know where you are on earth? Go on. I'm waiting again. Didn't think so. And let's not forget the problem with the seasons. Let's do some simple math so even the flat arts can follow along. When it comes to the seasons, your model would mean that the sun changes its orbit from the Tropic of Cancer, which on your model have a radius of 5,855 kilometers, and using the formula for circumference, circumference equals 2 pi r, we get a distance of 36,788 kilometers the sun has to travel to the Tropic of Capricorn, which on your model have a radius of 15,855 kilometers, after which, using the formula for circumference again, we get the distance of 99,622 kilometers the Sun has to travel on a flat Earth. And then back again, and all this in a year. Please tell me what force is responsible for the changes in the Sun's orbit. Plus, when its orbit is the Tropic of Cancer during the June solstice, on your model, it would have to go slower than when its orbit is the Tropic of Capricorn during the December solstice. As the distance of its path is shorter, but the time span, 24 hours, remains the same. Or more precisely, the Sun would have to change not only direction, but its speed from 36,788 km in 24 hours, or 1,032 km per hour over the Tropic of Cancer, to 99,620 kilometers in 24 hours, or 4,151 kilometers per hour over the Tropic of Capricorn. And then back again, and again, all this in a year. Again, please tell me what force is responsible for that too. B. 
because no known faults in nature have so far been found that would explain both the fluctuations in direction of the sun and the fluctuations in speed. Go on, I'm waiting. Didn't think so either. Then there's the problem with the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Let's for simplicity's sake, so even the flat arts can follow along, look at the sun rising and setting at the equinoxes. Let's place a person on the equator. Let's call him Bob. Now on this model, when it's noon, Bob will see the sun directly overhead, which matches reality. So, so far so good. Now let's turn back time to the sunrise, and look at where in the sky Bob will see the sun on a flat earth. Is it due east? Ah, uh, no. At sunrise Bob will see the sun northeast. And it would tend towards a more northern direction the further south Bob goes, and tend towards a more eastern direction the further north Bob goes. Hmm, not so good for the flat earth model, as that doesn't really match reality. Then what about sunset? Let's turn the clock forward and see what Bob sees. Well, what would you know? Now the sun is in the direction of northwest, and again the sunset would tend more towards the northern direction the further south Bob goes, and tend more towards the western direction the further north Bob goes. Hmm, that doesn't really match reality either, now does it? So how do you explain that discrepancy, flat arts? Go on, I'm waiting. Didn't think so either. Okay, that was fun. Well, subscribe and set your calendar for next time where we will tackle the burning question of what's underneath the flat earth. Happy hunting. Peace out.